Hey there, cats and kitties. I am the Blues Man, Johnny Blues, and this is going to be a brief little review for Green Lantern, the animated series, Episode 6, Lost Planet. I was really fortunate to finally catch up with this episode as I missed it when it first aired, and uh, it features a couple really cool Green Lantern Universe characters, uh, one of which was a first for me. So, uh, basically, as we begin, we have Hal and Kilowog somewhat at odds because they are two very different mindsets. You know, Kilowog is much more militaristic in the following rules and regulations side of it. And we have Hal, who's much more sort of off the cuff, you might say impetuous even. Um, you know, he's very instinctive. So the way he does things, because he's kind of calling the shots, uh, has the crew on the ship, you know, Kilowog, Razor, and Aya, all kind of wary because he has gotten them into trouble, um, you know, his way of doing things. But he's also saved the day. So um, they really can't fight the fact, uh, being that they are looking for a Green Lantern ring from a GL who was killed, whose name escapes me. And uh, they're led to this planet where they find these three marooned castaways. Um, their leader is this character, Zartok, somewhat questionable. And uh, he's actually voiced by voice actor Clancy Brown, a really cool cat uh, who has a history in voice acting and stuff like that, has played Lex Luthor. And, um, you know, basically they split up into groups to try to locate the ring on this planet. Promptly thereafter, Hal is pretty much thrown over the side of a cliff by the uh, creature that goes with him. And the planet, very interestingly, seems to react. Um, it seems to have a sense that Hal is good and this creature is bad. So it punishes the creature and actually lets Hal go. And this is the first of a couple warning signs. We also see that Razor is actually um, kind of <laughs> being one up by a... Uh, character that Green Lantern fans will definitely recognize in the form of Saint Walker. Um, he's very much the Morpheus to, uh, you know, Razor's sort of Neo, uh, a Matrix reference there, because he's he's one step ahead of him the whole time, and he's just, Razor's just trying to kick his ass, and Saint Walker just won't have one bit of it. So uh, that was very funny seeing that, but we see that the female, uh, you know, sort of marooned castaway has tricked Aya into getting back to the ship where she shuts Aya down and tries to steal the ship. Uh, the Zartok character who went off with Kilowog promptly regales him with this story um, kind of from a, uh, you know, disingenuous point of view where he's trying to pretend he's, you know, the victor of this battle between these two factions when in reality he was on the bad side that was fighting the good. And uh, so they come to blows. And it's very much left to the planet itself to help, um, you know, get the ship back and stop these villains. Uh, the ship powers up again in the end. Aya is turned back on. And it turns out that Hal figures out, because of all these warning signs like trees parting to lead him to where the, everybody is, um, you know, that this planet is sentient. And this was a brand new thing for me. I, I didn't know they had a Green Lantern that was a giant sentient planet. Uh, it's called Mogo, and it was apparently a character created by Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons. So that's really cool. Um, you know, and by the end of it, all things are hunky-dory, and they go on their merry way, and they have a new you know, planet-sized GL. So, very, very cool episode. Um, blew my mind to see a planet turn into a Green Lantern, and I loved it. And that's pretty much all I'm going to say on it, so I will catch you later. Peace.